This week on the Computer Chronicles, computers without keyboards. We'll show you the newest technology in speech recognition software. We'll look at the new Auto PC, a computer for your car that you can talk to, plus a totally new voice-based information service called Be Vocal. All you need to use it is a phone and some brand new gaming input devices. You'll never need to reconfigure those keyboard controls again. Plus my pick of the week, a specialized computer for viewing digital photos. It is very slick. It's all coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee. Remember one of these things? It's really mine. It was called a typewriter, and the input mechanism was a keyboard. It was a great invention when it first came out about 125 years ago, but unfortunately we are still using keyboards as the way to communicate with a computer. There has got to be a better way. So today we will look at computers without keyboards, new ways to interact with a CPU. And one obvious alternative to a keyboard is what I'm using right now, my voice. So here to show us the latest in speech recognition technology is Dan Newman. Dan is the author of these two books, Talk to Your Computer and The Dragon Naturally Speaking Guide. Dan, what I want to do is stop writing scripts with the keyboard. I want to be able to dictate this stuff. Is this stuff mature enough to be able to do that? It is. We're now in the fourth generation version four of the Dragon Naturally Speaking software, uh, which is the, the most common one that people use and the one that I'm going to demonstrate. Okay. Uh, it makes less mistakes than it ever did before, and it's much easier to learn. All right, let, let's just do it. Dictate a letter for me, and let's see how good it is. Address to Jeremy Ehrlich. New paragraph. I'm glad you could come to my office last week to take a look at the new version of Dragon Naturally Speaking, dash, version 4, period. The training time is much faster, comma, and it has many other new features too, period. New paragraph. Features paragraph. New paragraph. For more guidance on how to get speech recognition to work best, comma, visit my website, comma, www.sayican.com, period, new paragraph, letter closing, microphone off. All right, let me ask you a couple of things. Uh, first of all, that's pretty good. Now, is this a real demonstration? I mean, this is not something you've really It is not really scripted. I write letters like this all day gotcha. long. Now, go back. There was one error I saw. It had the wrong kind of two in there. Yes. Now, the, how often does that happen, and how easy is it to correct those kinds of things? I'd say uh, the program's generally in the mid-90% accuracy, so maybe 95%. So there are errors to correct, and the two and two small words like that is the most common type of error. Yeah. You can correct the mistake either by voice or what I most commonly do uh, is, is by hand. You could just type in an extra character there. Now, do you actually use this for real? I do. I dictated both my books with the software. You wrote your books by doing it this way. I was forced <laughs> to get into this. Uh, I had a hand injury, and I needed to get my written work done, and so, uh, so I learned all the tricks that you need to do to, wow. to get this thing so to function. So you had to do it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do some more stuff. Now, I understand you can actually do web browsing now using your voice and not have to mouse around? You can with the Dragon version 4 product in Internet Explorer. The dragon will read the links on the screen, and you can just say where you want to go right, to. Show us. Go to Favorite Computer Chronicles. There you go. Faster net access. Go back. Go to Favorite Say I Can. Good taste in websites there. All right, so now how, how, how does it know how to do all that stuff? You have to pre-program it with, with the different links? No, it actually comes uh, set up so that uh, the, there's a part of Windows 
where all the information on the screen is fed into a special part mm -hmm. of Windows that other programs can access. Okay. So the Dragon Naturally Speaking software reads and sees what links are on the screen. And so when you say a link or a favorite or okay. a bookmark, it matches what you said with the best possible choice. All right, now the next gadget I want to ask you about is this new thing, which is sort of a digital voice recorder but it also will do recognition and translate this into written text? It will. This records the speech and then you hook it up to the computer. For example, you can dictate when you're in your yard or in your car. You mm -hmm. don't have to be near a computer. But then you hook this gadget up to the computer and it will transcribe right. what you said. Give us an example of how you would do that, Dan. So I'm going to schedule uh, some appointments okay. and the computer will figure them out. Schedule meeting with Chris for 2 p.m. next Wednesday regarding sales information. Remember flowers for mom. Remember oil change in the car. All right, so you've entered a couple of to-do items and you can now put this into Outlook or something like that? Right, this is a product called Dragon, naturally speaking, Mobile uh -huh. Organizer. And so it does more than just transcribe the speech, it actually analyzes what you said and sends it to Outlook or your Palm Pilot. All right, so that's plugged into your serial like report and it's going to read those files and they're good enough so that you can actually trans right. transcribe Right, it looks them. for certain key words. And there it is. Huh? Um, that's right, and those were some, uh, it's actually transcribing oh, it's, it's doing it right now. now. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can also do this in the field, not just when you're sitting at your desktop computer. Right, it, it's, uh, it puts computing on the road. Gotcha. Dan, thank you very much. Well, if there's one place you really don't want to have to use a keyboard, it is in your automobile. Your hands are already pretty busy driving the car, more likely holding your cell phone. The solution in that environment is something called the Auto PC, and here to show it to us is George Giles of Clarion Corporation. Hi, George. Hi. We didn't uh, have room in the studio to drive the whole car, and so this is sort of a demo unit you've pulled out of the car, but this is the same kind of unit that might be sitting in my car? Correct. And just go through what the hardware is here. Okay. This is the main unit here, uh, which would replace a regular CD so or sitting in that car stereo slot in the dash? Correct. And then we also have a microphone here, mm -hmm. which is used for the voice recognition. And then we have a GPS receiver here okay. for GPS satellite Antenna navigation. Antenna would be on the roof or whatever. Correct. And we also have a wireless messaging device here. All right. So well. this is operating the way it would be in a car. Correct. It's just in this portable sort of demo mode right uh -huh. now. Now, you said it is a car stereo. Can I actually operate the car stereo using my voice? Yes, you can. For example, we're in CD player. Auto PC. CD player. Play. Auto PC. CD player. Pause. Pretty cool. All right, so you can run the radio. That's really handy because I think uh, half the time I think I'm going to get into an accident because you're looking over at the radio there while it's you're driving. It's very safe, yes. All right, next thing, uh, you this is actually has a digital voice recorder in here so I can record memos the way we were doing over there with that little handheld device? Correct. This one's a little bit different, and it has a one uh, push button, and it'll actually start recording right now, as you can see. And we can see the sound. So you're actually recording a memo right now, theoretically, or recording what we're saying. Correct. And what you can then do is export it on the compact flash card. Ah, and then take that file and just shove it in another device somewhere Correct. else. Correct. And it's uh, recorded as a wave. Can you actually play that back to, to listen to it? To sure. It Auto PC. Auto PC. Voice memo. Play. Button. And it'll actually start recording right, right now, as you can cool. see. And we can see the All right, so, so you're this, actually made a record this also is sort of a, a PDA, if you will, right? I can keep contacts in here Correct. and that kind of information I would keep in my Palm Pilot or my Cassiopeia? Correct. We have an application called Address Book, Auto PC, Auto PC, Voice Memo, Address Book. And what we can do here, you can keep all your contacts with telephone numbers just like you would on a PD. You could just ask for somebody's name and it would give you their address? Correct. For example, we're in um, a person called Kelly Uckman, Auto PC, Auto PC, Address Book, Read. Address book list. Kelly Uchman. And it'll read the information to you. Dial. Dial work phone. And it provides that information. 310-763-0929. So it could interface with my cell phone and actually make the call so I don't have to do that stuff either. Correct. Uh, this is a Nokia phone. We have a cradle for it so you can use it hands-free. Okay. Now how do I get all this data into the auto PC? 
Uh, you can either do it by uh, infrared. We have IR on the Cassiopeia, and we also have IR on the Palm OS device. Okay, so you can download your contact list from your, your handheld, your palm top device, through the IR port. Yes, there's an IR port on the left-hand side, and it goes both ways. So you can do it back and forth. Now, there's something cool in here. If you're not really sure what goes on, you can actually ask the thing, what are my options right now? Could you show us that? Correct. For voice commands, auto PC, auto PC. Address book. What can I say? The command words are yes, no, radio. You get a complete list. So if you forget what the polite Direction. word is, it'll, it'll guide book. you along. Message. Correct. All right, now you said you have that GPS receipt. Read. Can we shut her up? Volume. <laughs> what time is it? Thank you. Uh, you have a GPS. I can actually get auto directions in this unit, too. Yes, uh, we have a navigation program with this GPS device here. And as you can see in the program, it'll pull the information for where you are. So you don't have to input where you're starting from, and then you can go to a destination. For example, for, for the address book entry, Kelly Uckman, it'll pull up her information, and we can navigate to it. Got it. All right, now, finally, you can also call up traffic information or news storage just by asking for it. Is that right? How do you do that? Correct. Auto PC. Directions. Messages. You have one traffic message. Read. Traffic one message. Northbound State Highway 35 between State Highway 84 and State... That way, when you're driving along, you get that real-time traffic information so that you can make a determination if you need to get off the road, change routes. Now, can you program it to... I mean, does it know where you are because of the GPS? How does it know to give you that particular information? Uh, it actually is, is in the setup portion of the okay. program. So you pick out your city. Right. And can you, does it give you, like, news bulletins and sports information? It gives you like news, weather... Uh, email, alerts, it also provides you real-time traffic yeah. information. A uh, couple of questions. Will it work inside a noisy car with traffic noise and all that going on? It will. We actually have an upgrade microphone to this one. Mm -hmm. It's called the Andrea Digital Auto Array microphone, uh -huh. and it's made for those noisy environments. And what does it cost to get this in my car? Uh, this base unit is $1,300. Uh -huh. uh, the full navigation system is $1,600. Yeah, I know guys who spend more than that just on their stereo. <laughs> Thanks a lot, George. You're welcome. All right, coming up next, a new voice-based information service called Be Vocal and the latest in computer game Gaming input devices. We'll be right back. Well, when you need some fast information like driving directions or weather, it's not always practical to log on to your PC and type away. Speech may be the most efficient input and output mode. So here to show us a new approach to accessing computer-based information is the founder and chief technology officer of Be Vocal, Michael Berner. Hi, Michael. Good morning. So what are you guys doing with Be Vocal? Just explain the basic concept. Uh, at Be Vocal, we're aggregating uh, a, a large array of applications under one phone number. Uh, it's a toll-free phone number, and you'll call into the number and get access to things that you uh, normally get on the web, such as driving directions, traffic, or stock quotes, but it'll all be on one uh, free phone number. All right, so this is voice in, voice out, the kinds of stuff I might have to surf for. Yes. Actually, it's voice in, uh, but we also provide different output methods, and I'll kind of highlight right. some of that Well, today. let's give us an example. Uh, you need a directions. This is real case. Yes. To get from your office to our studio, you use Be Vocal to do that. How do you do that? Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, let's go through that. I'm going to call in to Be Vocal right now. Okay. Um, and we've got a, a number up. And again, you could be doing this from your cell phone in the car. Yes. Okay. Yep. Michael, and, uh, please say your password. 5309. Good morning. Welcome to Be Vocal. How can I help you? I need driving directions. Okay. I need to get your starting point. Please say a city name, airport, or saved address. Work. Now I need to get your destination. Please say a city name, airport, or saved address. Mountain View. Mountain View. Is this correct? Yes. Please say a street name in Mountain View. Charleston? Say the street number. If you don't know the street number, say, I don't know it. 2415. I need to confirm the address with you. 2415. Charleston. Road. Mountain View. Mm -hmm. Is this correct? Yes. Just a minute while I look up those directions for you. Did you know that Be Vocal also provides real-time traffic? So now she's going out and actually and getting the route for you. Okay. So we, we need a little, a little commercial in between. Yeah. Okay. This is a free service. Yes. For more Paid information for about, about our services. Yes. Okay. 
All right, I have your driving directions. Would you like me to read directions or email directions? Email them to me. Can we have her read them also? Yeah. Your directions have been sent. Would you also like me to read the directions to you? Yes. Estimated driving time is six minutes to drive this three-mile route. There are three steps total. It's really Step close. Step one, start out going northwest on West El Camino Real. Go one mile. Next. Step two, turn right onto San Antonio Road. Go two hmm. miles. Spell that. Step two, turn right onto San Antonio. S A N A N T O N I O Road. Go two miles. Okay. Next. Step three, turn right onto East Charleston Road. That was the last step in your route. Yeah. You can exit by saying so goodbye. So now one other thing we can do is I, I check traffic this morning. There's a lot of construction on El Camino. Okay, Street. real quick, yeah. Uh, main menu. I'm sorry. I couldn't understand you. For a list of commands to help you navigate, say help. Main menu. Going to the main menu. Say cancel if this is incorrect. Welcome to Be Vocal. How can I help you? Traffic. Welcome to Be Vocal Real-Time Traffic Reports. Please say the name of a highway, expressway, or, or bridge in the, in the Gate Bay Bridge Area. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. Golden Gate Bridge. Getting traffic reports for Golden Gate Bridge. Say cancel if this is incorrect. At this time, there are no incidents reported on the cool. Golden Gate right, let's Bridge. Let's talk about this a little bit. It's yeah. very impressive. This thing actually works. So this is, let me understand, a free 800 number. I can have my cell phone in my car, and I can get all this kind of information that I might be d getting on the web just by talking to this thing that's all computerized. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the whole interaction is based, all of the input, as you said, is speech-based, yeah. uh, and output is normally read to you, uh, but sometimes people now want to... Now, she sent you an email just in case you wanted backup on this. Can we see if that happened? Yeah. Let's check here. Uh, so we have a Yahoo email account. Okay. So we'll do a check mail uh, and go into a folder, and we've got our inbox here, uh, and this should be the message. And we've and got that's our the stuff she read. And you yep. can have gotten it faxed also, yes. right, if you wanted that stuff. Too. Now, one more thing. There's a lot of th kinds of information you can get. One thing I really like is if you're looking, like, for a FedEx drop-off box or something, mm -hmm. and y you actually have a service like that potentially available? Yes. Um, right now, we're, we're going through uh, exploring the different uh, services that are exciting uh -huh. for the consumer, and that was one thing that was pointed out to us. So we have something, and I could actually show you that. Um, it's uh, right now something that we're just providing to show the power so of the what demonstration, can be done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the advantage of her doing that as opposed to just calling FedEx? Well, um, right now, uh, it's hard to find out exactly where somebody's calling from. Yeah. So that's the power of what okay, we Okay, because your system knows where you're calling from. Exactly. You, it saved you time. Yep. All right, it's very cool. Be vocal, and it's free. Yep. Thank you very much. Great. If there's one area where keyboards are really inappropriate input devices, it is in computer gaming. The joystick helped solve that problem a bit, but now there's a whole new generation of input devices that make the gaming experience a lot more realistic. And our guide to them is Dan Amrick, Senior Associate Editor of GamePro Magazine. So you know all about this stuff, and you've brought all your toys here, Dan. First of all, you have two new mice, and you wouldn't think there's much difference in mice. There, there can be. As a gamer, you want the most accurate mouse you can possibly get. Okay. So th they're breeding a whole new generation of mice, if you will, uh, that are just specifically designed to be okay, super so accurate. What's this one? This is the Razer Boom Slang. Uh, this is the hot gaming mouse for the season. It's got five buttons, and uh, one of those buttons is a mouse wheel for selecting weapons or whatever. You can reassign those buttons to whatever you like. Uh, okay, and so more buttons, which is good for a gamer, and absolutely. very accurate. Extremely accurate. 2,000 DPI, uh, wow. but of course you're going to pay 100 bucks for it. Okay. And uh, some people don't like the feel of it. It's not uh, terribly ergonomic. Not weird design. Yeah. All right, what's the other mouse? The other one is Microsoft's new top-of-the-line mouse. It's the uh, IntelliMouse so Explorer. Optical. It is optical. There's a, there's a digital camera underneath. It no takes wheel, pictures. No wheel, no dirt, no dust. Exactly. It's very clean, and it's very accurate, and it also has five programmable buttons. Gotcha. So gamers love that stuff. All right, let's go to the sort of new kinds of joysticky things, and you have over there, if you could pull out that little gadget. The problem if you're doing a first-person shoot 'em up game is you got the keyboard over here for shooting and navigating, you got the mouse over here for your view, and they've brought all that together in one device, huh? Right. The the, the dual strike from Microsoft, this is that's a common problem. A lot of console gamers can't stand using the keyboard for games at all. Right. So the left half of this controller is a, is a traditional digital pad. Okay. Uh, while the right half is an analog mouse type device. So let's, okay, so can we play let's on fire it up. Here? 
Yeah, so you can just turn around the right side of the uh, controller and you're moving your head in the okay, game. So everything you have to do is right there in your two hands. Absolutely, it's completely self-contained and... Uh, Pretty clever. Yeah, they've done a, a great job and it's only it only retails for about 40 or $50. Not bad. So the price point is very affordable if you're a serious gamer. Okay, I want to ask you to load another game on the PC for a second uh, because I want you to show another device here uh, called, called the Racing Wheel and we're going to put up Need for Speed, sure. I guess. While you're doing that, let's get over and sort of demonstrate something on the on the Sega. I know I'm asking you to do a lot of things, but oh, that's okay. Yeah, gamers are supposed to be able to do a lot of, of things. Of course, right? you're multitasking. You're a Twitch expert, yeah. Uh, All right, so what is this? Well, this is Sega Bass Fishing, uh, which is out now for Sega's new console, the Dreamcast. Uh, but the thing that makes the game the most fun is the custom fishing controller, which is a separate purchase, but it makes the game 10,000 times So i got like fun. a virtual fishing rod here. Absolutely. It's got a rumble pack in it, and it's got a motion sensor in it, so it knows when you're actually right, so casting. Let me, let me try. Somebody Give it a try. Uh, just, so we're just fishing, so Yeah, as so if you were casting. Right. And there you go. And then reel it in and see if you can get a bass. And then I can actually pull that up like There you go. Uh, so, uh, multiple companies make uh, oh. fishing rods for this. This is Sega's own brand. Yeah. They're going to run you $30 or $40, but it makes the game so much more. It's like real, real stuff. Absolutely. Oh, I just got yeah. a little vibration. There you go. There you go. You've got a fish. Line. I felt Reel them in. Oh, you missed. Cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> let me ask you to load another Sega thing up real quick. Unfortunately, the Dreamcast loads nice and quickly. Yes. Uh, and this is another device, an input device just for the Dreamcast. Uh, which is a gun, right? You get all these shoot 'em up games, sure. and instead of the keyboard business and the joystick and the mouse, you got a gun. Right. Um, light guns have been around for a while, but they're starting to get a lot more fancy. There's been some for the PC, but they've never really caught okay. on. The catch with the Interact uh, Starfly Starfire Light Blaster. Okay, Light Blaster. Uh, right, is that it has two triggers: one for regular shooting, and then one for reloading. Uh, right, you don't have to like point off the screen. Exactly. When it's reload time. Exactly. It's also got an auto fire. If you're really feeble, uh, <laughs> you can have it automatically reload. You can have it even fire for you. So you're just pointing a wand at the screen. Uh, Not a lot of fun, but some people need that. Demo it real quick. Sure, we can give it a shot. Uh, and again, the Interact is one of many companies that make a light okay, gun so for this. House of the Dead is the game we're playing. House of the Dead Two. Yes, this was one of Sega's big coin-op hits. Sure, so sure. The only way to get the coin-op feel is to have a real. And you, know, you just a point at the gun. screen, and when the bad guys come up, hit the trigger. Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, if the bad guys came out. Okay. Well, we, well, we get the idea. Gun's a <laughs> sure. gun. Sure. Yeah, gun well, is a gun. Good. You know there how to shoot it at the screen. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. There you go. There you go. Okay. Now, let's go back to the PC for a sure. second. Sure. Switch, switch our monitor and ask you to do a million things. Now we got Need for Speed up here. And normally in these sort of racing type games, you got maybe that wheel which is sort of bolted down to your mm -hmm. desk or something which is a pain. This is a totally new approach to those kinds of games. Yes, this, uh, this is the Interact Racing FX wheel. Uh, it's very similar to RC car controllers uh, in that, oh dear. Uh, it's it's, it's self-contained, it's got the wheel on the side. All right, so your steering is over here. Mm -hmm. That's you your have sort an, of accelerator You button. have an analog trigger for the accelerator so you can ease off the gas slowly. Also, this particular model comes with a battery pack so that you can get force feedback uh, okay. rumbles and stuff without plugging in an extra AC adapter for the, for and the well, game. And what's the advantage of that over you know doing it the old-fashioned way? Uh, it's it's certainly more compact. Uh, this, believe it or not, this retails for seventeen ninety nine. So, wow. whereas Microsoft and Logitech's wheels are fantastic, they yeah. are going to cost you over a hundred dollars. So this yeah. is a great budget, uh, and and it's, okay. it's great. Okay, be for driving games. Absolutely. Last thing, I want to ask you about the mouse pad. You wouldn't sure. think that's a big deal, but you said that's changed your use of a mouse. Absolutely. Uh, if you don't feel like upgrading your mouse, uh, you can try upgrading your mouse pad. You wouldn't think it would make a difference, but the Everglide mouse pad. Better pad, better mouse action. Much better Great. traction, and you'll, you're, you'll feel it instantly. Dan, thank you very much. Sure. All right, that's a look at computers without keyboards. Don't go away. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week, a brilliant example of an information appliance that you can operate with one button. We'll be right back. Now for my pick of the week. You may have heard that in Bill Gates' mansion, there are electronic picture frames hanging on the walls rather than traditional works of art. And depending on your mood or who's in the room, the frames display different pictures. Well, now you can have the same technology that Bill Gates has in his house, and all it will cost you is 250 bucks. This is the new SIVA electronic picture frame. It looks like a normal frame for holding a family photo, but this frame is actually a computer complete with modem. In fact, this is a digital photo display device which right now holds 10 different photos. So if I get tired of looking at this picture, I just hit a little button in the back and I cycle through the next photo and the next one 
and the next one. In fact, if I hold the button down for just a few seconds here, I'll be able to go into slideshow slide show mode. There you go. And all 10 photos will automatically cycle through. But what's really brilliant about the SIVA picture frame is that it automatically downloads new pictures from the web so that if my relatives anywhere around the world have posted new photos on my personal SIVA album site, I can automatically download them into my picture frame. Let me show you what this is like on the back. There is only one control device for running this. Of course, you've got your RJ11 phone jack and your power cord, but this white button, that's the whole deal. So if I want to go online, I'll uh, put it back here. I simply uh, stand it up and I press the button and it logs onto the site. I don't need to know anything about phone numbers, URLs, setup, or any other computer junk. In fact, it will automatically log on each night to check new photos. This was really designed for your grandmother to be able to use. Again, it's called the SIVA Picture Frame, retail price $249. There is an annual subscription fee for use of the service of $36 a year. That's it for this edition of Computer Chronicles. Thanks for joining us. If you need any more information about anything you saw on the show, please check out our website. I hope we'll see you here next time. The Computer Chronicles is brought to you by BigStar.com with thousands of videos and DVDs for the whole family. Additional support by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. And by TVA, Television Associates, bridging the worlds of computers and video with DVD authoring and MPEG encoding services. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, the DVD revolution. In the market for a new PC, you should buy one with a DVD in it. We'll explain why. And DVDs are no longer just for playback. The next generation are recordable. We'll give you a demonstration. And how does a DVD drive work, and why is it so much better than a CD-ROM? We'll get you some expert answers. Plus, what can you do with a DVD drive? We'll show you some very cool software that takes advantage of its powers. And my pick of the week, an email terminal for under $100. It's all coming up next week on the Computer Chronicles.